I'd love to see you on a wave and then all of a sudden go like, yeah. Donald Trump saying wall at the border. They're like, oh, I got to get in. Oh. Trouble at the wall. Trouble at and the then, wall. And then Maggie running down the beach. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Come I got on. your stuff, Pete. Yeah. And people are like, like, are you a surgeon? Did something serious happen? I'm a voiceover guy. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Here we are with part two with the phenomenal Pete Gustin. Come with us. What made you decide to move from Boston to California? Because I remember watching videos of you playing with your dog and blah, 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 and having all this good time. Was it the weather or something else? It was uh, the <laughs> fact that uh, LA never sleeps, and I really never got to sleep. Uh, we, we had just started doing, uh, I was really getting into uh, the, the movie trailer auditions and, and working with some big production companies. And the day in the East Coast, I would try and wrap it maybe six o'clock, which seems like a normal time to wrap, but that's three o'clock out mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I had literally just started dating my girlfriend, Maggie, and I had literally just started getting all of this crazy work in the West Coast at the same time. And we'd try and go out to dinner at, you know, eight or nine o'clock, which seemed like a reasonable time. Yeah, no. But that was unreasonable <laughs> for the, the movie trailer houses and the production houses and the, the television networks that are based here in the West Coast. So we would be at, uh, our local restaurant or chain restaurant and would have to give, give us a box, we gotta get back home. And we actually, the first movie trailer campaign I ever ended up on was a SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water. And I was out buying Christmas gifts for clients. I was, I was with my girlfriend, we were at a liquor store buying nips to, to mail out to people. <laughs> and it was late, it was late, it was like 9.30 at night or something. And and they're like, we have an opportunity to, to for you to read for SpongeBob and I'm like, Okay, and we she just <laughs> she just floored it, got us home in like no time flat. I'm giving them my ISDN numbers as we're getting home, and I'm running up the stairs, and I hear beep. You know, they connect to the ISDN, and I sit down, and they're like, the first line is uh, in a, in a world of chaos. I'm like, you know, in a world. Hold on, I just ran here. Give me a second. Like, we literally ran into the house, and I did it after a couple takes of catch my break, and I got that, and 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 just after a short period of time of doing that, I was like. <laughs> need to get in a different time zone. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a heck of a lot of it. I love San Diego, learned to, to surf out here. Yeah. I love everything about it. But the, really the main main reason was I wanted to be able to go out once in a while. And have a dinner yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Yes, we can't have you starving, <laughs> poor thing. And, um, and, and so a few years later now, I yeah. mean, the, the, do you feel that you made the, a, a great choice? Are you, are you enjoying it out here? Yeah, I, I do love this lifestyle and being able to, little things that don't, you don't think about uh, concerning being legally blind. I mean, one, if you thought about it for a second, you realize obviously you don't drive. It'd be super unsafe. You know, I'd have the airbags, everybody else would be in danger. Yeah. But right. I, I don't drive. And so in <laughs> New England. Listen, the drivers in LA, I think most of You probably are, drive better than yeah. most of them, Pete. So. <laughs> no, the snow starts to fall in late November, early mm -hmm. December, and then the, the sidewalks get full. And I just totally became a house hermit in Massachusetts from uh, November, December, January, February, March. It starts to thaw out. I mean, the winter we decided to leave. We had a record amount of snow. I mean, mm. over your head. Yeah. Sidewalks didn't thaw out. There was a, there was a snow dumping area in the middle of the bar in the uh, Southie, I think it was, and it didn't melt, melt until the beginning of July. Mm. And I just got sick of being. I bought this big house in the suburbs of Boston, knowing that I'd be there all the time. And uh, I, I had my gym there and my theater and my studio and some space to walk in the super dog and a nice big backyard. But we were only getting out like six months a year. So to move out here and get out, and um, the other thing that's changed my life is is surfing. Again, being legally blind, like no tennis, no golf, no baseball or pickup basketball with my friends. Right. Um, but I can see just enough to get out there. Sky is light, ocean's dark, light and dark. And when the dark gets a little bit higher, that's probably a wave or a shark coming to eat me. Uh, <laughs> and so I, or I a start. Stingray. Yeah, stingray. What's <laughs> that? Go get on that board, <laughs> and so I, you know, just to get out of the to get out of the studio, which I'm yeah. still locked in, up in many many hours a day. But when I do get a free moment, I still strap a cell phone to my back for Fox News or anybody needs me. I'm never out of touch. Now you're serious about That's that strapping of the phone? Yeah, I, I have a I have an, I, I started with an Apple Watch <clears throat> on my uh, on my wrist for if they needed me, but it wasn't 
it wasn't glaring enough. It yeah. wasn't, uh, you know, the vibration when you're surfing, you don't feel it. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I strap a, a, a phone to my back inside the wetsuit and have it on high volume and high vibrate. So I can be sitting there like waiting for a wave so and all of a sudden. So you yourself yeah, while basically. you're surfing. Yeah, it's all, you know, good. Donald Very Trump good. said something crazy again. We need you to get in and cut a promo. So oh, and cut a promo. <laughs> start paddling in. Which is like every 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so hold on. So I want to, I want to, I want to go there for a second. So you're, you're surfing and then your phone starts vibrating and you're in the middle of a wave. Give us a little visual here. What does Pete do? Oh, the better, the better visual is when, so if you're not a surfer, there's a, there's a lineup. And yeah. you're, you're, you're usually, surfers are not solitary creatures. They all cluster together. They think that, it's hilarious too. They all come over to, like I'll go out there and I catch a couple waves and then I notice like everybody's coming over to me like, oh, he knows something. I'm like, I'm the blind guy. I'm the last one you should be following. <laughs> but I always, I always attract a crowd because I just go out to random places. I don't oh know where the waves God. are. I just go out there and I kind of feel the water, <laughs> find a place. I'm like, this is good. I'm by myself. And then all of a sudden, 15 people are all around me and I'm like, guys, you all people knew, but whatever. So <clears throat> I'm sitting there waiting for a wave. You know, you're bobbing up and down. You're waiting for waves. And my phone is set to loud volume. And it's like, ding, message from, it'll say the name of one of the people there. <laughs> and then it just, it doesn't say like, hey, Pete, can you read this? There's nothing of that. It's just, oh, nine, Donald Trump at the border. You know, <laughs> find out what's happening what? next. Insight from, uh, you know, Mike Pence on Tucker. <laughs> and like, people aren't used to hearing robot voices, so they don't know exactly what it's saying. <laughs> yeah. But everybody is all of a sudden in the water like, whoa, where is that coming from? <laughs> Who's talking? Why? Have he the has fish a talking wetsuit? Yeah, yes. or like, is it, is it, have the fish so tried to start hilarious. communicating with us? And like, I know what it is, and then I'm like, no, and then I start paddling oh. in, which makes it even weirder because like this robot voice happens, <laughs> and then random guy just starts paddling in. They're like, did he just get a warning from somebody that we don't? <laughs> oh my god, I'm what the hell is going on? <laughs> You're like a surfing ventriloquist. Yeah. yeah. This is hysterical. Okay, so what happens when you actually get out of the water, man? Well, then I got to get out of the water and I got to take off my wetsuit. The water in the Pacific, by the way, another thing I didn't know growing up in Boston, I thought it was all warm and beautiful oh, out no, here. No. no, it's cold. So I, I got a wetsuit on all the time. So strip off the wetsuit, grab the phone, and then I'm like, you know, be in the studio as fast as I can. And hopefully my my girlfriend's in the on the beach with me. Somewhere. If she's, Somewhere. If she's not, I got to call her. I'm like, fuck, call. We got to get home and so I'm getting out of my wet suit and running across the beach and she's awesome she she gets all her stuff and gathers it up and the two of us we get up to the studio as fast as we can and I'm yeah. plunking down in the seat and water is running off of me and there's sand and, on the ground and I'm talking about what Donald Trump is doing well, oh you, you guys are a good team there's this no is question. exciting there's man. no question you guys are a great team yeah Maggie, um, my life is exciting Maggie's awesome and she's and right a lot over of there. Help. I don't yeah. even know that you could do it without Maggie <laughs> no 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 She's no, like no. she's like your better half for sure, man. Yeah. She's your superpower. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. This is um, so cool. Okay, so Martha Graham, one of my dance heroes, said, what other people in the world think of you is really none of your business. So you've obviously been told along the way that this isn't going to work out. You can't do voiceover. You can't do this, that, the other. What made you ignore those people's opinions? The, the very first guy I ever spoke to when I really decided I was going to make a go of it. I was still in college. I hadn't graduated, graduated BU yet, but I went down to New York and um, through the, the grace of a, a, a great production guy from in Boston by the name of Willie B, set me up with interviews uh, with all the major agencies. And the first one I went into, I, I never say the name because it's not important. Um, the guy sat me down, listened to my demo and told me very bluntly, that his clients wouldn't want to work with someone that has a disability such as mine. And it was very matter of fact. I don't think at the time he was being harsh, mean. This again was 1998, seven, eight, somewhere around there. Yeah. I think it was 97. Different time, different time. I mean, uh, it was just a different time and place and work environment. And he told me his clients don't want to work with someone that's disabled. Because right. at the time I was still, I didn't have the audio prompter going. I was still memorizing copy with the magnifying glass. I don't think he had a lot of malice. It was kind of an a-hole thing to say. Uh, and I was devastated at the time. Uh, I, I, did, uh, I did cry that night because um, I was told that the thing I wanted to do, be a voiceover guy, was not going to happen. I mean, this wasn't just some guy being like, hey, that's going to be tough. It's not going to work. This was the best agent at the best agency telling me that it wasn't going to work. It was, you know, nailing, yeah. coffin, done, career yeah. over. That's not yeah. going to happen, pal. 
And that's, you know, that's kind of the time when I was like, I'm going to focus on production. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, earlier we talked about how I was using my voice doing my own copy, yeah. but it, 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 it always sat in my head wrong that someone was going to tell me that I couldn't do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the initial tears that, that came from that meeting uh, turned as, you know, people with seven stages of grief. I feel like I was going through grief mourning over a career that I never had until it eventually turned to anger. I'm like, screw that. I'm going to figure this out. And that's when I really started trying to come up with different ways to do it. And all along the way, all along the <clears throat> every step of the road, I, I, I had people in my life that were supportive. Uh, my, my parents are always supporting what I'm doing, but they didn't understand the career. My mom worked at a, in the public school system. My father's a, a car dealer, and they didn't get exactly what I was doing. And you know, they're always giving me the thumbs up, whatever you want to do, you can do it, kind of. But I, I didn't have, I had more people saying, this is going to, this is hard for me. I had more people saying, this isn't going to work, dude, than I had people saying, you can do it. And those people are actually the ones that I can credit most with being like, screw you, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. It, it was more a drive for me to prove people wrong uh, than being lifted up by supportive people. And I don't, maybe that's my fault for not being surrounded uh, surrounding myself with a different type of people, but it worked. Yeah. No, but I mean, you inherently have this, I will not be a victim. I will not at least try to overcome that challenge. I mean, is that something that's always been, do you think, in your being or? I guess. Again, just I, I guess. Just getting knocked down and standing back up. I don't know. I guess, again, I have to go back to, to my mom. And these are things that I, I didn't realize at the time. I think everybody probably takes their parents for granted uh, yeah. when you're a kid. Your parents are your parents. They are who they are. Um, and I grew up and, and, and later, I mean much later, like by the time I was like 32, I was like, holy crap, my mom was a bulldog. Like, you know, <laughs> she, she followed me through the school system, uh, working in the office. When I was in elementary school, she was in my elementary school. When I went to junior high, she went to my junior high. When wow. I went to high school, she came to the high school working as a registrar. And she was always in the background. The one thing that I needed from my teachers, one thing, uh, was that they were going to write on the chalkboard they needed to say out loud what they were reading. Right. And if there was ever a teacher, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know what was going on. If there was ever a teacher that wasn't doing that, or if I was having trouble in a class and uh. I'd like mention offhand to my mom, my mom would be like, <laughs> you know, pulling them aside after. I was like, you need to remember to say it out loud. And, and, what was their room number? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she was, she her. was just getting, you know, she was, if she was willing to fight for me, yeah. well, how could I not fight for myself? You know, I, I needed that. to. T I needed to take the reins of my own life, and she was not the type that was going to be like my poor son with his terrible yeah. eyesight. You know, she didn't play the victim. She didn't want to be the victim, and I grew up and I just picked up that mantle when I became old enough to make my own decisions. Yeah. That I was always going to fight for what I wanted as well. I love it. I what love a great it. attitude, man! Amazing. We all want to be like Pete. Yeah. We don't want to be stung by a yeah, ring. No. Take, yeah. <laughs> no. But we definitely want to be like Pete. I like wearing two <laughs> shoes too much. Absolutely. <laughs> So are there days when you don't feel so brave and you don't feel so courageous? And how do you power through those and keep going? It's getting harder because this isn't a, a degenerative eyesight disease degenerates and it keeps getting worse. And I can remember six or seven years ago being able to go to a beach in Massachusetts and play Frisbee with my friends. These days, I don't know if I could, uh, you know, avoid walking into one of my friends on a beach right. uh, w w with 100% certainty. Yeah. Everything is getting harder. Yeah. Um, my studio is my haven. I am a king and god in my studio. Everything is set up for me yes. perfectly. Yes. Right handed, left handed, that microphone. I know how to do everything in there. It's it's. I can do it completely with my eyes closed, as I do mostly anyway. Yeah. But uh, out, <laughs> outside of the studio, you punned yourself. Thank you. He punned himself. <laughs> I'm funny. You're uh, funny. But outside the the studio and and in the world, yeah. and again, we've moved to this new place where I'd like to explore and do things that I'm I might not be comfortable with, and and most of that is I do lean heavily on my girlfriend Maggie and. She makes the world comfortable for me and opens it up for me and allows me to go places and do things that um, would I be scared? Maybe a little. Uh, would I be uncomfortable? Very. A lot of things are hard to getting here. She drove me here through two hours and 45 minutes yes. of traffic. Yeah. I, I, I'm even, I don't even like uh, uh, getting into Ubers by myself, meeting new people. Once I'm introduced, once, you know, Pete, Chuck, Pete, Stacy, once I, then I be, can become me, but not having eye contact and not being able to read a room the way I used to, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, catch facial expressions, it's a little daunting and intimidating. I do my best and um, 
could I do it all alone? I guess, but my life is certainly a lot better for everything that she helps me. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. I couldn't, I personally, I couldn't imagine mm -hmm. uh, not having a Maggie um, yeah. because that, I mean, seriously, I mean, I have a Stacy and I can see, and that makes my life easier. So I can just imagine. Um, but um, as if you weren't busy enough, mm. Okay, now you decided to become an, arth an author as, yeah. <laughs> as well. Oh, but wait, uh, wait. not one book. Why not stop one book, with one, Chuck? But two, Ray two. Ray Pete wrote two books. Yeah. What the heck so, is up with that? Uh, the funny thing about becoming a, uh, a, a novelist is the, <laughs> the reason being is because my day got so busy, yeah. I needed to fill it. And it sounds counterintuitive. But my day starts at 6, 6.30. Um, I'm released from my on hold from Fox at four, so and I get a little bit of time to do something for myself, but then I'm back in the studio every evening. It never really ends. But that's not to say, even with 50 sessions, 50 sessions over 10, 11 hours, you're not jammed up. You know, I'm not session to session. I mean, there are. There are times when I can go 90 minutes, maybe two hours, session to session, session to session. But there are times when there's 20, 30 minutes. And I'm in a soundproof booth, sitting there by myself, and staring and at Facebook. And you don't have enough time to really go anywhere. Yeah, I can't go yeah. anywhere. So I had written, I, I call it my practice novel. I'd, I'd written a novel a number of years ago, it was probably 2011. I strung together 86,000 words and made a story, and it kind of worked. Um, I found that I loved it. Love. I, I'm, I'm a creator. I love creating. The way I like doing production, the way I like bringing life to voiceover copy. I like bringing things into this world and creating art. And the whole process of creating a novel, the, the genre I'm writing in is uh, uh, fantasy. Uh, and the second book is a little more fantasy sci-fi. Sci so you not only get to create characters, which is super fun, but you get to create worlds and technology. And writing for me is, is a very natural process so long as I've created the characters well. And that's why I, was, I did two books. One was 96,000 words, the other one was 88,000 words. I did them in less time than it took for the summer to pass because I created these characters uh, that I had very clearly defined in my head. Mm -hmm. And then I gave them really cool worlds to exist in. So in between sessions, the first book is written from the perspective of an 18-year-old girl and her name is Cindy. And um, between sessions, I sit down and go, what would Cindy do now? And this is what she would do. It doesn't take a lot of thinking for me. I don't have to plan way ahead and I don't have to create art. I just go, what would she do next in this world? I create an interesting world and figure out what the character would do next. And the books really, to me, write themselves. And it's mm -hmm. just such an enjoyable process to, to so cool. play out how these stories uh, and it's it's all you know you watch TV and you're being taken along for the ride yeah uh, and this is a whole world that I get to create I love it I do love the process that's amazing buddy. so how can yeah. people get these yeah what what is the exact name of each book and where can they get them this is all like super new um, I the the Kindle version he doesn't know <laughs> this is no this is like I, I haven't even spoken I mean, this about is this, be, this publicly because yeah. it, it's just that should so, we not talk about no it? No, no, no these this is books gonna be posting in November just FYI so these this books, will be in November. Oh, Okay, so, so so everything. The first one will be out. Um, it's actually the first book is called Wish, um, because really quick synopsis. Uh, everybody's wish came true one day, uh, and, and, and it's it was an amazing world to create. You think about what everybody's innermost wow. wish is. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's two characters. Again, I'll be super quick. What one uh, shot a girl and killed her father, put her in a wheelchair. They're the two characters that are focused on in the book. She wants revenge. He wants to dominate the world. You both get your wish in this world called wish. Um, and so the, 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 what is it, the movable force versus the unstoppable object or mm -hmm. versa versa. Um, that was the fight throughout the whole book. It was super fun to figure out how that would play set against a world where everybody's wish had come true. Um, that one is available on Kindle right now. And as of tomorrow from the day this is taped, will be available on Amazon if you Google Pete Gustin. Um, both the Kindle and print version will be available. Wish by Pete Gustin. Second book coming out uh, be a little bit later. These are going through. I've, I've been getting really good response from actual established authors and editors and writers. They're going through a full editing process. Yeah. Uh, real, real books. And uh, the second one is going to be called The Skill Conspiracy. The main character has a little bit of the dude from The Big Lebowski mixed with a little bit of Pete Gustin, which was fun for me. 
um, <laughs> because I had it in mind that I'm going to narrate this book. Never done it before. Yeah. Uh, but I wrote this whole book knowing that when I'm done, when it's edited, when it's all set and ready, mm -hmm. I'm going to sit down in the studio. I'm going to narrate this one myself. So I put a lot of my personality into this book. That's, That's so gonna great. That's going to be great. That's going to be great. All right. I'm out of here. I'm done, man. I can't do... I have never written... I've never even written a page of anything. My goodness gracious. Um, you do very in-depth client profiles, Chuck. That's I feel very little right now talking to Pete <laughs> and all his accomplishments. I feel so small. There is room in the world for both of you. We need I both need to of grow, you. Stacey. You got to help me grow more. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Chuck always says, you know, we, he's like, I want to write a book. We should write a book. We which, should write a book. Which is code for I'll be writing the book. So stand by. Um, yeah. So um, we have a mystery question. Okay. Do you have a favorite number? Say between five and 125? Um, 53. 53, he said with... Why 53? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, if you won a lottery, what is the first thing you would do? Oh, don't do that. Because uh, <laughs> that's the question you have to answer. That's yeah, the deal. but like... Okay, yeah, I'll no, give you a different well, the, one. The reason, this, let me explain the reason, because... Every time, because you've already won the lottery. No, no, we. I brought this up. My my girlfriend is here, and she's the one that's like, I'd give it to charity, and she would. She'd totally give it to charity. <laughs> and See, I, people always get the question they're supposed to get. It always. Oh boy, we got. She we got oh, she'd help subject. the homeless, and then she'd you know feed the starving and all that stuff you're supposed to say. And Pete would. I would Pete's totally. Like, I would buy a. Ferrari. I would totally buy a house closer to the beach so that I wouldn't. <laughs> Make her have to drive me home in between sessions so I could just but walk see, there. But see, you still have her in mind. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you a different one on yeah, this. Yeah, give him another one. On Although that was a good one. That was good. <laughs> Poor Maggie getting hazed for her philanthropy. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. Damn philanthropy. Her and her big heart. Jeez. Look bad. Jeez, Maggie. <laughs> um, okay. If you could have a secret listening device in any one room in the world, which room would you like it to be in? This is going to sound bizarre, but I I kind of I would like to hear more of Scott Rummel's sessions. <laughs> 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 oh, he'll get a kick out of that. You just made his whole day right oh now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The, that's hysterical because whenever we see Scott and someone's coming that maybe he doesn't know, he'll, he'll jokingly, because we know Scott's the nicest man, he'll go, gee, buddy, I hope he doesn't like fanboy all over me or something. <laughs> Do so, you think he's gonna he's gonna want to take he selfies? Wanna take selfies with me? Should I give him any advice? He'll say things that like is that. So funny. It's hysterical. Man, I got to say something. Uh, and, and Pete, I know I told you this earlier off camera, but I'm going to say it now on camera. And that's yeah. that anytime, first of all, I am so incredibly proud of you. And I'm, yeah. I'm almost I tearing know. up a little bit because I I, it's true. Thank you. <clears throat> Pause for Barbara Walters. <laughs> it's Pause for Barbara. Here we go. <clears throat> well, it's funny that it's been such a long yeah. road and I can really it pinpoint it to it having started from working with you. I never... One thing I didn't I didn't say uh, I forgot to say the, uh, the the Fox News thing. How did how did they find me the first time? I found this out yeah. uh, much later. Um, they just Googled me. It wasn't even through my agent at the time. They Googled me and they hit play on my demo. Mm -hmm. I did with you. I did a TV promo demo. I did a movie trailer demo. And I did a commercial demo, and those are all front and center on my website. And they hit play and they heard a Chuck Duran demos that rock demo with my voice on it. And that's what made them call me. So the, the, yeah. the journey really did. And I can't tell you how many things I've booked. People being like, I went to your website and heard, they're always hearing something that you had me do uh, right off the bat. I've tweaked the demos a little bit, just kind of mush yeah. them together. But it's, it was all off of that session we did. So yeah, my, my entire career, I mean, literally my entire career yeah. started with our sessions together. Yeah. Nice. Well, <clears throat> what I'm going to try and say here without yeah. like getting over emotional. Hey, let it uh, flow, And thank man. you for that because... That's when I worked with you, I remember saying to myself, wow, what an incredible guy, man. He's just like so cool and he's fearless. And it's, it's hard for me to, to, because everybody out there has all the tools, you know, they can go take classes and do this and they have eyesight and they have everything. And you don't have that like everybody else, man, and you just plow through it and just freaking make it rock. 
and you've become so successful and I'm so freaking proud of you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Everybody's got their thing. Every, I, my thing's just kind of really obvious, but I, I've come to, uh, my dad was always good at pointing out like, other people have it worse and other people have it worse and other people have it different. Everybody's got a thing and uh, you just got to decide that your thing is not going to stop you from doing what you want to do. Well, amen to that. We're, we're all <laughs> bowling here, Pete. Thank oh my you gosh. For, thank you for it's sharing It's amazing. With us, um, well, much abundance to you and to Maggie and Superdog. Um, <laughs> your beautiful dog. And what's your little dog's name? Skylar, the new one. Skylar. Um, you deserve every happiness and abundance. And we're so proud of you. You're always welcome here. And um, stay away from the stingers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, sorry for breaking down there. Uh, Don't I just ever couldn't help apologize. it. But, man, we had a great time. Thank you, Pete, so much. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this two-part uh, episode with our good buddy Pete Gustin. Yes. And stick around next week. We're going to be back with a whole brand new Real Buzz Weekly for we you. We are. Never apologize for your I will. Okay, check. I don't, I don't He's apologize. a big feel of this one. Sure. I love that. You guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. I'm Pete Gustin. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And watch out for the friggin' stingrays. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.